more than 50 colleges. Let's welcome a comedic rising star, Joe Deuce. All right, what is up IUSE? You good? All right, great reaction. This is, uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun today. I'm happy to be here. Welcome back to school, starting the fall of 2020. And did you ever think this is how you would do it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't know how you go through college socially distanced. Like there's no way possible to do it. I see you guys have a bunch of clubs and organizations out here. Half of them have footballs and they can't throw them to anybody. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. You guys, are your hands dry from the hand sanitizer yet or just the black people, just me? My hands are ashy. I'm telling like my knuckle is cracked. It is terrible. They need to make more hand sanitizer with Jergens built into it. I need lotion with my hand sanitizer. So if you are handing out hand sanitizer tonight, you need many bottles of lotion as well for your ethnic friends. Just letting you know, because our hands are horrible. COVID's terrible. Like if COVID was a person, it'd be the guy who brings his guitar to every house party. Like, like, get out of here, Donnie. No one wants to hear your version of, of of Laffy Taffy on the guitar, okay? Like, I don't know if Laffy Taffy's still a popular song. I guess WAP would be what you guys you guys are listening to nowadays. My uh, my nephew just started college this year, and uh, so that makes me officially old, which makes me feel really bad about things. He tells me all the time how old I am because I do old people things like uh, leave voicemails. Apparently, that's not a thing you're supposed to do anymore. Yeah, I do that. Uh, I use the wrong emojis for things. So I invited him over to the house the other day for dinner so we could, we could have some eggplant and potatoes. Not supposed to put the emojis in there. That's what I, that's what I found out. So you guys good? Good? Doing well? Doing well? Enjoying this sunshine out here that they ordered up? I'm glad. I'm glad I'm going to be 10 shades darker by the time the show is over, which is great. I don't know what you had to do to be a good club and get shade. So very well established, new student programs. Glad you got the, the ideal part over there. Yeah, I came here all the way from Kentucky. So any Kentucky people here? All right, we're in the house. Woo, glad we got out. Yeah, I know I am. I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Kentucky to be honest. I'm born and raised there. It's crazy though, cause I travel all over the country. And when I go to places to do shows, there's always somebody who comes up to me after the show and they're like, oh my goodness, Joe, you're from Kentucky? <laughs> I know a guy named Trey. He's a black guy, light skinned. He's got braids. He's from Kentucky. You know him? I'm like, it's not that small. We don't know each other. Get out of my face. That's stupid. <laughs> then as soon as they walk off, I'm like, I do know like three Trays that are light skinned with braids. So that makes sense. <laughs> I probably, maybe we do know the same people. I'm not sure. Love traveling around, touring around. COVID's made it weird. This is the first show I've had to put pants on for in five months. So I don't know if you guys like Zoom. You like Zoom, sir? It's like my favorite new thing. It's amazing. You can just turn off your camera and do whatever you want around the house and the other person has no idea. I don't like doing comedy shows on Zoom because I feel like it's my Netflix watching me. It's really weird. Just little squares staring back at me, either laughing or, or not turning off their sound while their kids are yelling in the background, whatever the case. It's a lot of fun. That means somewhere in the nation right now, somebody has Joe Deuce and chilled. So I'll hold on to that. That's really good. Yeah. Bell tolls are going off. That means it's time to go somewhere. Do you guys have class right now? Are you in class? Or this is the first day? Second day. It's all virtual. Everything's, that's right. We're on, what are we on? IG Live. What's up, Instagram and uh, YouTube? How you guys doing? And uh, live people who came out of the house and refused to live in fear. Wearing masks, that's the, that's a whole new thing. I didn't know that masks could be a fashion statement. That's a new thing. Like you got Dunder Mifflin on your thing, right? That's pretty cool, right? Like I got I got a couple of new ones that have like UK logos on them because I'm a big UK fan. I didn't realize masks were like a fashion statement, but I can see this is what's going forward. This is going to be yours. is not very fashionable, sir. It's just random old paper. Like that's <laughs> that's okay. You know, you you got like the Dollar General of masks. You need to you need to upgrade, bro. <laughs> You see, look, you got Indiana University on yours. It's, you're styling, right? Like, I, I just want some with my face on them so you can actually see my face, put my face on my face. That's my plan with my mask. <laughs> I never thought I'd have to argue with people about masks. That's a new thing that's going on now. Like, people don't want to wear masks and they're yelling about it all the time. I got a friend who is totally anti-mask. He does not want to wear one, but gets really mad at me if I don't buckle my seatbelt when I get in his car. You see the irony there, sir? Good, okay, just making sure. You didn't respond, or maybe you did. It's behind a mask. I'm not sure. I'm excited to be here. Hey, photographers. Hey, 
Glad you guys can make it out and take a picture of the big audiences I'm bringing in across Indiana. Woo! <laughs> I uh, grew up in a house with a mom who used to spank us. Anybody else get whooped when you were growing up? Is that something that's meant you, sir, you seem like you do. You don't have socks on with your boat shoes. I know you get whooped. That is, that is a sign of a bad person. You do some bad things from time to time. It's okay, man. That's, I used to get whooped, and that was fine with me. That was, that was not a problem at all. The problem I had with my mom was she would, she would threaten me before she would spank me, and that was a big issue for me because I didn't think her threats made sense. Like my mom would say this. She'd be like, boy, if you don't sit down and shut up, I'm going to break my foot off in your backside. And I'd be like, well, first of all, mom, your foot's not going to fit, okay? And if you want to hobble around the house looking like Kunta Kente, that's up to you. I don't know what to tell you. Young people, Kunta Kente was a slave in this movie called Roots. Uh, he tried to run away, and they cut his foot off. That's, you look lost. I want to make sure you are with me, okay? Don't worry about him. He got the host reading Rainbow after that, so it was cool. It was a lot of fun, yeah. You look lost. I didn't want you to geek. You thought he was a rapper, probably. He was not a rapper. He was not a rapper. He did have two chains. Um, so that was, that was the thing. Oh, the Pikes laugh. They got it. They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. My mom used to say this. She'd be like, boy, if you don't sit down and shut up, I'm going to knock you in the next week. I'd be like, oh, now we have time traveling capabilities? <laughs> You know, if you could just knock me back 10 minutes, we could avoid this whole altercation. Yeah. One time, my mom got so mad, she didn't know what to do. She was like, ooh, ooh, you, ooh boy, mm, you know what? <laughs> Wait till your daddy gets home. <laughs> yeah. I was four then. <sighs> it's been a long wait, people. <laughs> no, I'm just being serious. Um, my dad, he wasn't around a lot when I was growing up. He was kind of like the McRib. He would just show up at random times, no explanation, pickles and onions. He's like, what are you doing here? No one likes you. I wish my dad was nacho fries. That's what I wish. <laughs> He's back in my life now. He lives in Louisville, actually. And uh, he heard me do that joke last year. He was upset, y'all. Like, after the show, he was like, hey, boy, you better tell people I'm back in your life. So he's back, OK? He's back. I think it's him. Um, it's fine, y'all. We're going to find out next year. We're going on Maury. So. I've got it narrowed down to him and Ice-T. Those are my two picks. <laughs> kind of hoping for Ice-T, I'm going to be honest. It would be awesome. We had a crazy other lady in my family. We called her grandma. Anybody else have a crazy old black lady in your family, sir? No socks? No, no crazy old black people in your family? No, just white ones. That's cool. That's fine. Everybody got old crazy people in their family. Yeah. My grandma, she's weird. Like, she collects things. Like, some people collect, you know, coins or stamps or baseball cards. My grandmama collects picture frames which would be fine, but she never takes the original picture out of the picture frame. <laughs> in, her front, in her front room, it's 350 picture frames, all white people. And the worst part is she'll lie to you about who's in the picture. You'll be like, Grandma, who is this white lady with the Dollar General stamp on her forehead? <laughs> She's like, oh, that's your Aunt Tammy. She's adopted. We don't talk about it. <laughs> like, that's not true. I've never met a Tammy. My grandmama, she's uh, really confused by technology. Like, you know, a couple months ago, she tried to ground my nephew because she thought he downloaded an app for drug dealers called Instagram. That's not what that is at all. She, uh, she lost her house phone a few months ago when I was at her house. and She did what I thought was brilliant for a lady of her age. She pulled out her cell phone in order to call her house phone. House phone started ringing. She hung up the cell phone, shuffled over, picked up the house phone. She said, oh, Lord Jesus, I done missed a call. She hit redial on herself. Cell phone started ringing. She hung up the house phone, shuffled back over, picked up the cell phone. She said, oh, Lord Jesus, somebody done called this phone too. She went back and forth like that for an hour and a half. I didn't have the heart to tell her. It was just her calling herself. That's one of my dreams is to be an old black person. I can't wait. Just want to sit in the park somewhere and judge people. That's what we do. That's what, like you just give advice un, unsolicited. Like people are walking up to dogs. You're like, no, 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 no. Don't touch that dog. That's what I want to be. I want to be the guy who's in a watermelon. I, I, I saw a guy in Walmart take a watermelon back. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I saw an old black man in Walmart take a watermelon back. It was already cut and everything. <laughs> like brought it back in and set it on the customer service counter. He was like, this ain't got enough juice in it. Like, they gave him his money back. I was like, that is bold. I can't wait to be that old. Like, I'm getting closer. I know I'm getting closer to being old just because, like, my stomach is a little bit in my pants now. Like, that's how you can tell how old people are is how high their waist is on the pants. Like, when my, when my waist is up here on my armpits, then you know I've reached my goal. Okay? So, just hoping I can get there. Woo! It is hot out here. You didn't tell me this, Seth. I should have brought my own personal AC and put it in front of here. This is... So are you good? You got pants on like me. You just, yep. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. I, I read an article the other day about how this, uh, this whole pandemic is gonna, is gonna <laughs> make jeans non-existent anymore. You guys, have you guys seen this? 
to think. People have gotten so comfortable wearing basketball shorts in their house all summer that they're not gonna wear jeans anymore because they're uncomfortable. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm on board right now. This is like the moment when I've been turned. I'm on there. So I can't wait to not wear jeans. I'm just gonna wear basketball shorts to meetings. It's what I've been doing for the last five months. Any of you taking online classes? Online classes, all of you? Yeah, yeah, how is it? It's horrible, awful? Why is that? You don't know, it just is. Okay, yeah. well, that makes sense. That's, sometimes you just can't put your finger on. Yeah, yeah that's, I think, it, I don't think I could do online classes, to be honest, like, every time I get online to check Facebook, I get distracted by 20,000 other things and never check the original thing I got on Facebook to check. You know what I'm talking about? So I, I have like online ADHD. There's no way I'd be able to be online for class. They'd be like, you need to log in and listen to my lecture and I'd be on YouTube or Netflix. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no way. There's no way I, I would be flunking out of everything. So make sure you don't do that. Okay, stay focused. Maybe, I don't know, only use Internet Explorer because then it won't show Netflix well. <laughs> Always buffering. Yeah. I actually uh, get to work with college students all the time. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm worried about y'all's generation. I think some of y'all are dumb, okay? Not all of you. Some of you have some issues. Like, I, I actually went and guest taught a class for African American Studies, which was part of my major when I was in, in college. And uh, at the end of the class, I gave them their assignment that they were supposed to do. And I was like, hey, you guys got to write uh, a three-page paper reflecting on this chapter, and it needs to be in Times New Roman, 10-point font, double space. This kid in the back of the class raises his hand. He's like, yeah, Joe, uh, real quick, does that have to be typed or written? And I was like, well, if you can write in Times New Roman, 10 font, double space, then I guess <laughs> that's the dumbest question I think I've ever heard. <laughs> Who writes in computer font? That's not a thing. <laughs> that's, that's how you get made fun of in elementary school, writing like that. I heard you guys don't know cursive. Is that true? Your generation, you guys know cursive? Are you sure? Like if I asked you to make a Z right now, you'd be able to do it? Look, he's, he's like, no, never mind. <laughs> I'm worried about it. I don't know. Y'all's generation is, is interesting to me. I do think uh, the women in y'all's generation are okay. And the only reason I say that is because on our campus where I was at, they had one of the best arguments I've ever heard in my life between two of the females. They were right outside my door. One of them came up to the other one. She was like, oh girl, your outfit is busted. And the other girl was like, whatever, I'm a 10. First girl was like, oh, you a 10? Must be on the pH scale, because you basic. I was like, oh, shoot, that is a scientific burn right there. That is, that is high quality. So maybe I'm just saying, get a study buddy who's a female, and they'll help you. <laughs> guys don't even know how to put socks on with the boat shoes, so there's <laughs> no way. This is uh, a lot of fun being out of the house, because right now I uh, am married with a three-year-old. Uh, and I say right now because depending on how much longer this pandemic goes, I'm not sure how long it's going to last. I'm going to be honest with y'all right now. I don't know if any of you have been around a toddler lately, but they're jerks. I can't stand <laughs> my daughter. I didn't realize we were raising devil spawn in my household, but we are. I'm getting to know her now, and I don't like her like as a person. Me and her are not going to get along for, like, life. I don't know. <laughs> like, little kids, they bother me a lot, man. I, I love her. I love her. She's a lot of fun. But uh, you ever love somebody and not like them? Dunder Mifflin, I know, yeah, you look conflicted, I can tell. Like, that's, how I, that's how it is with a, with a toddler. And she's smart, but she's also dumb at the same time. You ever met somebody like that? Like she knows if you can't find me in the house, she'll just yell out, daddy, daddy, and then I'll pop out and she'll find me, right? But I got her a Where's Waldo book a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Came into the kitchen and she was just flipping through it like, Waldo, Waldo. And I'm like, that's not how that works, baby. She's like, he not here. And I'm like, no, he's, he's I, okay, never mind. Be dumb. I'm worried about her. I am happily married. We just celebrated 13 years of marriage. So, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, give it up. None of you are married, I hope, in college. Marriage in college sucks. <laughs> like, I did it for two years. It was, it was rough. Uh, love being married. Like, a lot of comments they get up here, they talk bad about their spouse. That's not me. I love being married. My wife is my partner, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I will warn you guys this, because it's all guys here in the front. Listen. I thought after a decade with the same woman, I'd know everything there was to know about this woman. That is wrong, okay? Like, I learn new things about my wife every single day. Like, recently I learned my wife's a magician, and her favorite trick is she'll change the TV to some show I don't want to watch, and then the remote disappears. She watches reality TV. You guys watch reality TV? Good, it's stupid, I hate reality TV. I'm like, how boring is our life? We gotta pay to watch this. We can go to Walmart and judge people for free. I'll do that all day, like, that is easy. She watches this reality TV stuff and she's really invested in it. Like she loves all this reality TV. She loves a show uh, called 16 and Pregnant. You guys have seen this, right? 16 and Pregnant. 
She loves these shows. She loves uh, Breaking Amish and the Amish Mafia. And she loves uh, My 600 Pound Life and the Offspin, My 800 Pound Life and the Offspin, 1,000 Pound Twins. I'm like, that is a ton. That is a ton of stuff right there. It's a lot. She loves reality TV. I can't stand it. And the only reason I can't stand it is because I know um, when I was growing up, I used to watch Nick at Night all the time. And it would show all these old school classic shows like the I Love Lucy show and, uh, you know, uh, Carol Burnett show, all these great shows from back in the day. And now on Nick at Night, they're showing Friends, which is like a show from when I grew up. And everybody loves Raymond. Like that kind of stuff is on that. So that means like 20 years from now, guess what's going to be on TV land? On classic TV. Teen Mom. Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> it's gonna be terrible. Like I don't want to leave that that legacy to the next generation. <laughs> That's why I hate I hate reality TV. I can't stand it. I will say this: uh, the longer you're married, if you have a wife who does watch reality TV, the more you get into reality TV unknowingly. So like when we first started, you know, our marriage, my wife would watch stuff, and I'd be like, "What is this? This is terrible." Now she doesn't even have to be home and I'll be yelling at the TV in the living room like, uh-uh, Kim, you don't come for Nene unless she call for you. So <laughs> just, just be aware. It happens. You change without even knowing. Pikes don't get that joke. See, they, they don't know the Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> you Beverly Hills guy? I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's right. Okay. Didn't know that I called that. So Love being married, man. It's a lot of fun. Dating is different now. I'm glad I skipped y'all's generation of dating. Like, you guys just, like, swipe on people, right? Which is, like, the most shallow way to date ever. Like, you don't have to get to know anybody. The only way you get a blind date is if her profile literally says she's blind. Like, that's the only way. It's weird. Like, when I was growing up, grandmas hooked you up. That's how you, that's how you knew who you should date. Like, your grandma would be like, I know this nice girl from church. You should call me her. And she'd be, like, real cute. And you'd be like, yes, grandma, way to go. Best wink man ever. Now you guys have, like, a just the most basic way to find people. You're like, mm, not hot, click. <laughs> you don't know that. She's not hot now, but 10 years from now, she could hit the gym. You know, like, you don't know. <laughs> You're like, uh, I don't like guys with beards and holding fish. Boom. <laughs> you don't know. He could have bought that fish at a market and provided a family a meal. You don't know what he's doing with that fish in that picture. They're never doing that. It's just a trophy. Let's be honest. I don't like the way you guys date. <laughs> I just hope I'm never single. That's, I'm just hoping my wife never leaves me. Uh, so that I don't end up not wearing socks with my boat shoes and swiping on people. Whew. I'm, I'm grilling you because you're the only one here. Like, there's like, there's 10 people. I, I have to choose wisely who I pick on. I'm not picking on the guy with jeans. He's already crazy. He came out here in jeans. Like, I, <laughs> I know he's going to get me. <laughs> he's got a mug. Look, you, don't, you, don't, you never mess with a man with a mug. They will stab you. He's got pins in the mug. He doesn't even have a drink. He's out here in jeans, hot, dehydrated, with pins in his mug. See what I'm saying? You gotta know how to reach your audience. I'm not messing with this guy. He's got on shoes that run. Like he, he's got them tied and everything. He, he might catch me. See what I'm saying? Boat shoes with no socks. You want, you want to slip and fall. That's, I'm not worried about you. Pick your battles. That's what I'm saying. Comedy's been a lot of fun. Getting to travel around the country. It's awesome. I get to travel around the world now. I got to go to Africa and have a blast over there. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to Africa. No, just me. That's right. It's a lot of fun. If you ever get a chance to go, you should go check it out, okay? It's a lot of fun. Beautiful scenery, beautiful people. They're very giving over there. I had a blast when I was in Africa. It was probably the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life, but it's not what we see. Like, America, we just have a vision of things that's different. Like, sir, what's the first thing you think of when you think of Africa? Safari. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, I love asking white people what they think because the nervousness that I can see in your eyes, like, oh, no. <laughs> put me on the spot. Safari, that's a good answer. That is a good answer. You know, that's, that's not what most Americans think. They mo most of them think like, you know, naked African kids, like, because they've seen that on commercials, like national, it, that's not what it is. They have cities just like us. They have people just like us. It's a lot of fun. They got sports. I will say, uh, in Uganda, where I was, the basketball league sucks. Like, <laughs> they are terrible. So if you ever want to play professional basketball, go to Uganda, because they are terrible. Like, they can dribble a lot, but they never hit the basket. <laughs> never. I love it. It's a lot of fun. Hey, ladies, how you guys doing? Good, good. We got open seats if you want to join us. We're gonna go get coffee first. Oh, okay, okay. They're gonna go get coffee. That's the thing that puts they put in mugs, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I know, jerk. I got it. I'll leave you alone. Yeah. 
What, what majors we got over here? What, what's your major? What is it? Finance. Oh, okay. So you're going to be a money man. Hopefully. That doesn't seem very confident, sir. You should be very confident in your, what you're going to do. Like, you have a vision board? Yeah. Okay. I heard that's a thing people do. I don't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What's, it on, what's on there? You, just make, you don't actually have a vision board? You just made it up? The five-year plan. What's your five-year plan? Real estate. You're going to be a real estate broker? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's not, I mean, that's not bad. That's, I mean, I don't know how much that makes now. I'm sure it makes a lot of money currently because it's like a buyer's market. But, uh, you know, we're about to, COVID's kind of, you know, killing us. Don't do commercial real estate because now no one has to go to offices. Everybody can work remotely. So be aware of that. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a vision board, Socks? No? I didn't think so. Yeah. What, do, what is your major? Sales and marketing. Okay, yeah, that's okay. You don't need a vision board. Yeah, sales and marketing, you just make up whatever you see in front of you, right? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. You, what's your major? Criminal justice. I'm gonna stay away from you. Um, <laughs> we haven't had a great history lately, so I'm gonna <laughs> leave you alone for a little while. Now, what do you wanna do? Law school? Like, you wanna be a lawyer, like a public defendant, or? I mean, I'm not really sure. You're not really sure? Okay, you know how greedy you are after college. That's fine, that's fine. Everybody needs good lawyers. We need better people in general. Like I think our country is really, it's really messed up right now. Anybody else agree with that? Kind of, yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're Republican, Democrat, Christian, non-Christian, gay, straight, doesn't matter any of that stuff. It's just everybody is so isolated. Like everybody's just living in their own circles. I think we gotta do better. And I, I have hope for us. Um, I try not to talk about politics very much in my set. But sometimes you got to. I was in Utah back in February. This lady came up to me after the show. She goes, Joe, I really appreciate the fact that you don't talk about politics when you're doing your comedy. And I was like, thank you, ma'am. She was like, we've never been more divided than we are right now. And I was like, um, we had a civil war. Like, that was, that was pretty divided. Like, it wasn't like the South was unfriending the North. That wasn't a thing back then. Like, it was pretty divided back then. I think we have more hope than they did. And I believe we have hope. And I found out right here in Indiana. I'm gonna be honest, I was doing a weekend in a place in Indianapolis, a comedy club called Crackers. It was awesome, because every night I could get on stage and go, what up, Crackers? And like, no one could get mad. And it was awesome, I, I was there for the weekend and I ended up going uh, to an outlet mall in Edinburgh, Indiana, because that's where my finances are, you know? And so I went down to this outlet mall, went shopping, I got done shopping, and on the way back to Indianapolis, I-65 was shut down completely, so I had to go on all these back roads, and I ended up on this, uh, old US 31, you guys ever heard of this road? Uh, I was driving on it, and on the side of the road there was this huge plywood sign, and on there spray painted it said, Honk, it's Tina's birthday. Now, I don't know if that's the voice it was written in, I just assume that's the voice it was written in. <laughs> it said, Honk, it's Tina's birthday. And I love a good time, so I honk. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> I looked over, and on the front porch of this trailer, there were six people in a Walmart kiddie pool, inflated, having the time of their life. They, they saluted me with their beers. They're like, woo, very excited. And I felt like a very important person. Like I was a hero for like three seconds, right? And then uh, I looked behind them, and also on the front porch of this trailer is this huge rebel flag. And I was like, oh no, these aren't my people. I should stop, should stop honking at them, probably. But then I thought about that as I was driving. I was like, you know what? For like three seconds, those rednecks had a black hero. So like, this is the unity we need in America right now. So I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. I'm Tina's birthday party. That's the party I'm in now. <laughs> I'm actually with anyone but Kanye party is what I am. <laughs> I can't believe he's running for president. Would you vote for Yeezy? You, you're not sure? That, okay, but the fact you weren't sure is what is wrong with the law enforcement industry, sir. I need you to... <laughs> Be sure, like, I don't care if you vote for Trump. Yeah, he's, he's bad to some people, but he's not bad to other people, and he improves some things. He says dumb stuff, but so does everybody else. Joe Biden's old. <laughs> he is, like, basically, if you vote for Joe Biden, you vote for Kamala Harris at this point, and she locked up a whole bunch of people in California, so if we have a problem with cops, that might not be the way to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, there's, there's so much, <laughs> like, any way you go, you're wrong. I think we need to establish some new parties. Tina's birthday party's one. It's gonna be rednecks and hood black people.